Hello, everybody. Have you ever found yourself under a dark, starry night and you've looked up and you've thought to yourself, oh, look at that beautiful pattern of stars over there. I wonder what they're called. And oh, look at that pretty yellow, orange star there. I wonder what that's called. It was on a night like this that I began my journey looking at the stars. And it happened just over 30 years ago when I was a young mum and I had three young children. And it happened to be at a period when one of my little boys was quite sick for a couple of weeks with a very bad flu. And I also had a little baby girl. I'd just given birth to her. So I was up quite a lot at night time. And I just decided that one in the early hours of one morning, that before I went to bed, I would just go out onto the front patio and just have a little rest. I will never forget what happened that night and I stepped out onto the patio. When I looked up at the sky, I just could not believe my eyes. The whole eastern sky was ablaze with starlight. I took another step out into the garden and I looked above me and I could see all these beautiful patterns of stars. And just for a moment, it just took my breath away. And all of a sudden, I kept asking myself these questions. Oh, what are all those patterns of stars? And look at those beautiful colours. I just want to know what it's all about. My mind was racing 100 miles an hour, and I was just inside all of these questions about the universe. What's it all about? And it's so beautiful. I really want to know this. Then all of a sudden, under the warmth of all that starlight, my mind just went quiet. And a little voice inside me said, well, here I am. Come and find out all about me. I, for a moment, thought, what am I going to do? How am I going to record this? So I ran inside. I found a piece of paper and a pencil. And I went back out on the patio and, and I drew exactly what I'd seen in the eastern sky. I had no idea what the constellations were, but I just knew that I wanted to know what the names of these stars were. After that, I could not wait for my baby to wake me up or one of my children to wake me up because what I'd do then is I'd settle them, I'd run outside with my pad and my paper and I would just do these drawings of the night sky. And I had no idea what the stars were. All of a sudden, my children were going to the library two or three times a week because I needed to know what I was drawing. And they thought I was the most wonderful mother. And I decided that I would let the sky teach me because I knew nothing about it. So the best thing I could do was just wait for things to happen, do the drawings and find out what constellations that, that were in the sky. Within three months, they were going across the sky and going down to the west and a new lot of constellations would be in the sky. And this is what happens. I found out that, and we all know this from school, we're on a planet. But we don't really think about this. And there's two things that we're doing. We're spinning on our axis in 24 hours, and this is what gives us our day and night. And we're flying in orbit around the sun. And we're doing this very, very fast. If I click my finger once like that, we've just gone 30 kilometres in a second. Now, this is fundamental if you want to be an astronomer, because while you're just looking at the night sky, it doesn't appear that you're actually moving at all. If I click one, two, we've just gone 60 kilometres. Did you feel the Earth move, anyone? Did you feel it? But we are, because we have to get around the sun in one year. And it's this movement that is why every three months we get to see a different portion of the sky. Once you've learned the constellations in the sky, you want to see more. I really want to see more, so I saved up for a pair of binoculars. The pupil in your eye is only about seven millimetres, but a pair of binoculars, if you have a look at the aperture of a pair of binoculars, they're 10 by 50, 
which are the best size to buy, that opens up another whole wonderful universe of things to look up at in the night sky. You can see all the phases of the moon with a pair of binoculars. So you can see all the craters on the moon, the lunar seas. All you need to do is steady them as you're looking up at the sky. And when you look through the sky and you look up to the part in the middle of our Milky Way, you'll see all these beautiful star clusters and nebulae, which are areas of where stars are being born or dying, and beautiful little patterns of stars, which I saw on that first night. This is one of my favourite objects, which I love to see in a pair of binoculars. It is an object called Omega Centauri, and it's up near the Southern Cross, and it's an area of the sky that's a ball of stars that have got millions of stars all gravitationally bound together, and you can see them with just your binoculars. An absolutely wonderful object in the sky to look at. Then I had a camera and some lenses, and it was not easy to take photos of the night sky because when we're taking ordinary pictures, it's just fractions of the second like that. But I learnt through trial and error because I had no one to teach me. I was a young mum. I turned my camera and lenses to the sky and I took pictures of everything. The star groups, the moon, the, the planets, everything. Now, I had a little buddy under the stars, and if you become an astronomer, no doubt you've got one of these objects in the garden. This is Ziggy, my Dalmatian doggy. And after I had pestered all my family for years, knocking on a door, come look at a comet, come look at an asteroid, come look at the moon, no, leave me alone. They'd all seen these things, and by this point, they didn't want to be woken up anymore. My, my favourite trusty dog, Ziggy, would always be there with me. Now, these two objects that I've taken the pictures of are two comets that were in the Southern Hemisphere in 1996 and 1997. And if I hadn't have learned how to use my equipment, equipment, I would never, ever have got these photos. On my right there, Comet Hayakataki, and I lived in a place in Ashmore with a lot of light, and I was able to take this comet with a big tail on it. And the other one is Comet Howbop. If you become an astronomer, guess what? You've got to get out of your comfort zone, everybody, because the universe is not going to wait for you to finish your dinner, have your nap, have your sleep. If it's going to be in the sky and it's going to be there at 3 a.m., You've got to be there to see it at 3 a.m. Comet Hayakataki was 3 a.m. Comet Halbop, on the other hand, was a dinner time comet. <laughs> this was really... Are you seeing where I'm going here? Why Mummy was in the bushes trying to take photos of this comet, I had a husband, three children, a dog and a cat, all wanting to be fed for dinner. And I would be there saying, please, please, look, it won't come back around for 100,000 years. Can I please just wait for your dinner for a while? This is why I put this story here for you. Every photo that I take has got a story. And if you push yourself a little bit, what's getting up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, really, if you're going to see something special? Then I learned with my camera that I could take really Beautiful pictures. Remember, this is just camera lenses on a tripod. Anything that you can all do. And you can see here a beautiful crescent moon. And that happens to be Jupiter. And the stars are pinpointed, which means this is only just a couple of second photographs and I'm able to capture something like this. Couldn't you do that? Could you do that? Of course you could. I could. If I could do it, you can do it. But... The trouble is with your photography, with your lenses on a tripod, is that the Earth is spinning on its axis. And you can actually take a beautiful picture of this. This is called a star trail. And if you point it to a special area of the sky called the South Celestial Sphere, and on the Gold Coast that happens to be 28 degrees south, point your camera there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and you'll start to see the rotation of the Earth. Anyone can do that. My astronomy and space 
education began when my little baby girl started her first year at school, 25 years ago. And she asked me, Mummy, can you please be my show and tell? <laughs> and I looked at her and thought, can I do this? 50 little grade one children sitting in front of me, can I really do this? So I took all my photos in, and these children were all sat down, and as soon as I started talking about the night sky, showing them my pictures, all their little faces all lit up like little stars. They just asked so many intelligent questions. I was taken with that. I thought straight away, I want to share what I've got with children, with people. I got these beautiful drawings. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Of a little child looking through my telescope, and I literally have thousands of them. This is the little telescope that I brought, a top-of-the-range Tasco. And I love that telescope. This is, began my association with NASA. Because what happened was, in 1997, the Mars Pathfinder landed on Mars. And I started to write away to NASA and the different facilities, saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going into schools, and would there be any chance you could send me some material to help me in my school? All of a sudden, boxes of material posters. They were just so pleased that here was this lady on the Gold Coast who was going into schools and showing children. And since then, I have been working with NASA on the different space missions. And I didn't know then, back in 1997, that I would be part of one of the most exciting missions to Saturn called the Cassini this Cassini mission, which I've been involved with for 15 years. It's at this point I say to you, I saved up and saved up, and I knew that I needed to get an equatorial mount telescope. That's one that counteracts the movements of the Earth rotating on its axis and going forward in its orbit. And I knew I wanted to, and I knew I needed one where people could actually line up behind the telescopes and, and be able to look at the object without it moving across the eyepiece. And that's what happens if you don't have a computerised telescope. What happens is you'll be looking through the telescope and it moves. Saturn moves, Jupiter moves, the Moon moves across the eyepiece because what are we doing? We're rotating on our axis. But if you've got a computerised telescope, that's not going to happen because I line it up to the South Celestial Pole <laughs> properly, and then I'm able to keep it there. Really clever, isn't it? So what can you do with a telescope? You can't do this with your camera and lenses. You need a telescope to take beautiful pictures of Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars last year came very close to us. The moon. The moon is the best object to start with, whether it's your looking at it with your binoculars, or even a small telescope, because it fills up the whole eyepiece, even in a small telescope. It is a wonderful object to look at. The next thing that can happen is on a new moon, when the moon, on the Earth, that's the moon, and that's the sun. So as the moon goes around us, that's the full moon, last quarter, new moon comes here, it means that the moon will cover completely the disk of the sun and we get a total eclipse of the sun, which is absolutely beautiful. If you're looking at the sun, you must have a solar filter on your telescope or if you're using your lenses or your binoculars, use a solar filter. This is the little Pleiades star cluster. It is so young, it's only 100 million years old and it's still got all its baby gas all the way around it because that's how stars are being born, and it's blue, a beautiful blue colour. This is up in the Milky Way, and it's one hand. The Milky Way goes all over us, just in one area in, in, in Scorpius, and this happens to be a dark nebula and one of those beautiful Antares star there, which is a beautiful orange-yellow star. Isn't it gorgeous? This is what I do with the Saturn Observation Campaign for NASA. For the last 15 years, I voluntarily take my telescope anywhere, and I show people from the age of 2 
to 82, 92 objects in the night sky. And what do you see? Smiling faces. Beautiful smiling faces and I get to share my equipment and my passion to show people and I would you like to see Saturn or Jupiter through my telescope? Would you like me to take you outside and show you all the stars now? Of course you would. It'd be wonderful. I'd love to do it. So whether you decide to go out and try to catch a meteor one night or you grab a pair of binoculars and sit on a hill like my husband is to see a beautiful comet. This is Comet McNaught. You'll see me underneath the night sky, still doing what I love to do. I can show and I can tell you about the night sky, but it's up to you to get off your comfy lounge, open up your door, step outside, look up, and discover your night sky. So happy stargazing, everybody, and thank you very much.